zap or if you stand, whoop. Hey there viewers and welcome back to the channel. My name's Matt and today we're finishing off the playthrough of Space Quest 1 VGA on the 386 SX16. Where we left off is we're here in Ulan's Flats. We've obtained some money from the Slaughter Death Machine, we worked out the Delta is in Sector DD and we've purchased a ship to intercept it. But where we're stuck is that we need a droid to help us pilot the ship. So here we are at Droids Be Us, which is not so subtle play on Toys R Us. I think there may have been a kind of lawsuity thing back in the day about that. I'm not 100% sure. If we head over here just to the east, we can see here's the main showroom. A couple of funny things here. There's a sign which we can read. The sign says, All sales final in 1,438 languages. And here in the window, we have, This robot is a security droid. He can scan an area in infrared, ultraviolet and infra-ultra chartreuse. And this one here, it's a robot that seems to be saying, buy me, take me home. And I think if we just click on the building, this is the Droids Be Us storefront. They sell droids for all purposes. Excellent, that is what we need. So we're just gonna save it out the front here, mainly because there's a whole range of droids we can buy and some of them are kind of funny. So let's take a look. So greetings, sir. Allow me to show you our fine line of robots, otherwise known as droids. We have a wide variety of work-saving, life-enhancing, shiny new factory press technological wonders of modern engineering wizardry. However, I can see that we would be more uh, interested in our line of economy-priced used robots, wouldn't we? Please observe our robot preview screen. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. So up here on the screen, it kind of shows us some robots and if we have a look it says this view screen shows pictures of droids currently available in your rather limited price range i thought there was a way you could get a bit more info about each droid maybe we ask the guy the brand name says it all sucks is a major manufacturer of refrigerators dishwashers and someday even time machines just happens to be one oh, i have one of these in stock been completely reconditioned since it's regrettable accident that took the lives of but of course you don't want to hear about that yes this dandy compact unit goes for a mere 29 buckazoids or 23 with coupon you can't go wrong when it sucks <laughs> that's pretty funny all right let's just save it here in the store because we don't want the sucks you can probably guess but let's buy the sucks oh damn i missed it okay so the hu1d you can fill out one of our credit applications, so I seriously doubt you would qualify. Let's just ask about it anyway. These little robots are perfect for gardening chores, and they don't mind at all if they're away on space missions for centuries. Yes sir, these may look like Kleenex boxes, but they're built to run a long time. And quiet, you bet. We've got a set of three, and you can have all of them for just $9.99 buckazoids or $7.99 with a coupon. Yeah, that one's out of our price range. Ooh, the Dalek. Um, this model has a bad rat unearned, if you ask me. They're just a wee bit too ambitious, is all. And who of us isn't? It's quite an endearing quality, actually. However, we're fresh out of them right now. No one seems to survive long enough to trade them in. Classic. Uh, the hi -O. These are really some of the more useful all-purpose robots around, and extremely good with children. Of course, they're all in hibernation this time of the century. I could let you have him for just 875 buckazoids or 700 with a coupon. Alright, let's try Max 42. This one was one of my better bodyguard models and it doubled as a radial arm saw. If it had one fault, it was probably a tendency to be overzealous. It no longer available except for demolition purposes. His memory isn't the best, so I'll let you have him for 512 buckazoids or 410 with a coupon. So 
can't afford the Max either. What about the Rock? These robots have a very bad attitude. You've got to keep them in line or they'll walk all over you. Uh, well, maybe you shouldn't consider buying this particular model. Okay, so not the Rock. Now, that model is ideal for flight systems operations, the Navtur one. It'll pilot any modern fighter or cruiser, and it's one of the most experienced droids we carry. Ask only 45 Buckazoids or 36 for the coupon, so we can afford the Nav. I've got it from some gambling type who is required to pay up or perish. Obviously this is the one we're going to actually need, because we need it for the ship. But just for fun, let's wait till the sucks comes back up. Or oh, mate, what's this FB? This is an all-purpose household model. It cooks, sews, does windows, and brews a little moonshine on the side. However, I only have one left, and I'll put it to work in the warehouse. If you were to insist, I could let you have it for a mere 512 Buckazoids or 407 with a coupon. I think that's the dude standing out the front of the receiving bay. Now, the Def Tech. Ah, this is one of my personal favourites. It was purchased exclusively for droids to be asked by a small planet who used these mechanical warriors to fight their battles. That race killed themselves off, however, and spare parts are nearly impossible to find. Don't bother haggling, this one's worth 40, 55 buckazoids for the parts alone. Oh, that will be 46 with a coupon. Let's get that coupon happening. Let's get this death tech happening. Very good, sir. This coupon in tow gives you a reduction of 20% in our price of our previously owned droids. Okay, so that didn't buy it, unfortunately. Now we're stuck on the rotation. So, oh, the YX-10. This model was originally designed as a family companion on those long space vacations. However, the manufacturer had to discontinue it due to a psychological disorder. Whenever it gets excited, it waves its arms around and wildly and yells, Danger! Danger! If you can live with the paranoia though, it makes a great babysitter. And if you've got kids, you'll appreciate its low, low price of 698 Buckazoids or 559 with a coupon. Okay, so we can't afford that one either. The Murridge is a truly beautiful piece of machinery. This design rates five stars. Although a handsome machine, this robot has a habit of killing people without any real reason. I'd love to sell you one, but every last one we had was swapped up by a movie, or snapped up by a movie director from New Japan 4. Sorry. All right, now the sucks. Let's buy the sucks first. And so quickly it's happening. You may pick up your purchase at a convenient Droids Be Us pickup area located just out the door and to your right. Excellent. So let's see what the sucks 9000 does. Hello sir, your new robot will be here in a moment. Oh my, another shredded customer. I suppose someone will be upset about this. Why do I bother? You seem to have trouble maintaining your composure, not to mention your molecular structure. Get yourself together. Unfortunately, the universe, uh, you're the universe's only hope. So yeah, the sucks just blows up, which kind of sucks. Now the other one we could afford, I think was, so let's quickly get our coupon happening. I think the HE1D was out of that price range. One after this, the Dalek. No, no, let me stop. The Hyo? Don't need to have enough money. The Max? Not enough money. The Rock? My conscience just won't let me sell you to him. He'll sell you to you. Besides, your next of kin might sue. Okay, so we can't afford the Rock. The Nav will just wait. Try the FB, don't have enough money. Death Tech, ooh, we managed to buy the Death Tech. Nice. Here's your incredibly complex robot, sir. I sprained my thermodynamical tricycler carrying it out here for you. I hope you're satisfied. And I hope you're smarter than you look or you'll never be able to put it together. How depressing. Let's try and put it together. 
Unfortunately, you aren't smarter than you look. So you'd best leave the incredibly robots, incredibly complex robot parts alone before you hurt yourself. Too bad they don't give rebates to retrobates. Damn. Okay, so that one does not work. Back to our droids. And let's quickly use the coupon again. Yeah, as you can see here, they've built a few of these in for fun, like the Daleks from Doctor Who, and a few of these are probably from some other things. So, was it a rock? I think what, no, not yet. FB, no, not money. Def Tech's what we just tried to buy. Try the YX, don't have enough money. Murridge, sold the last one. And we're back to the sucks. So, all we can buy really is the sucks. Um, and the actual droid we want, which is the nav, and the other one that just comes in a box, which is a lot of fun. So, let's wait for the nav to pop up on the screen. Be soon. There we go. Hello, sir. Your new role will be here in a moment. Well, there he is, sir. Programmed to follow you around like a whimpering little puppy dog. How humiliating. So let's take a look at the robot. Your new pilot droid appears to be a bit dinged up, but functional. You hope that he knows more about piloting a spaceship than you do. Cool. So let's save it here again. Uh, we might do this one as a new file. And... Uh, that'll do. Let's put it back here at, uh, what should we call this? Port Droid. Alright, so we're pretty much out of things to do here in Newlands Flats. The only other fun thing is, you can see these kind of cylinders with the spinny thing on top. If we have a look, the settlement of Newlands Flats is surrounded by these force field generators. They repel such undesirables such as the Grell, which thrive below the sands. It will allow only airborne vehicles in or out. So let's try and walk out. Ouch, that hurt. You're standing next to the protective barrier encircling Newlands Flats. Due to the fact that you are land-based, you are not able to pass. I wonder if like Space Quest 4, if you do it enough times. Yep. Yikes, it looks like you hit that force field one too many times. Not only did it burn every follicle of hair from your sleek frame, but your aorta, if you could see it, now resembles the end of a red celery stalk. Okay, so just like Space Quest 4, if you run into the force field too many times, it'll get you. Alright. So now we should be able to hop on up into our ship. And the little droid dude's gonna come and connect in. Once you're seated snugly in the ship's compact cockpit, the robot moves into position and you push the load button. Hey, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going with my ship? Okay, so you would have just seen the time pod appear there. That's a little Easter egg from Space Quest 4. So, if you've seen the Space Quest 4 playthrough, you'll know exactly what that time pod is referencing. And if not, maybe take it a look. Um, it'll explain itself a lot better if you actually either play through or watch the playthrough of Space Quest 4. We've achieved escape velocity. It might help if you were to tell me where we're going. Please indicate our destination on the touchpad in front of you. So this is some further copy protection. So all we need to do here is we need to go to our little copy protection book, which I've got in front of me. And I want the sectors, so that is on this page. And we want DD. 
So that is three, oops, three, well, three bars. The C looking thing, uh, three bars again, and I, I. Okay, I'm plotting our course. Course is plotted, stand by for warp speed. Now if you choose the wrong course or you put an invalid code in, I believe you crash out when we go through this asteroid field in just a second. Sensors indicate a large ship in this sector. I wonder who it could be. We'll continue to scan for an ID. Whoa, that's a Sarian battle cruiser. We'd better stand off. If we get any closer, they'll detect us and for sure, and we'll be space sputum. Let's head head on out of here, okay, boss? Um, well, obviously we've got to click no. As you exit the ship, you carefully slide the jetpack on your back. So this is where you would have lucked out if you didn't sell the space skim uh, space uh, sand skimmer, not the space skimmer, the sand skimmer, um, with that second deal with the jetpack. You would have been dead stuck at this point because I think you just float off into space. You're floating in space just outside the biggest darn spaceship you've ever seen. You see a door. Perhaps it's a way in? So we have a look here. You can see there's kind of a, a button or something. It's a handle. So let's operate the handle. If you look carefully, you can see the little thrusters firing to counter the torque as Roger turns the handle, which is very accurate from a physics perspective. All right, so here we are on the Deltor. Let's just give this a quick save. Let's call this on the Deltor. Now, trick to this is there's gonna be a robot coming in in a second. And maybe if I just save it now that a little bit of time's elapsed. Let's just see what happens if we kind of just stand here and watch the robot come in. I wonder what this thing is. It appears to be a decontamination unit, something like the ones used to zap the Andromedan cockroaches aboard the Arcada. You wonder what it's here for. Your overheating backpack lies smoking on the floor. You hope that it doesn't explode. I wonder if you can pick it up. You don't want to go near it, it may explode. Okay. All right, so alert, alert, organic contamination detected in airlock. Those laser shots were incredibly effective as your body will attest. Being in plain sight probably didn't help you much. So they give you a nice little clue there. Being in plain sight. So what we actually need to do is just kind of hide over here, kind of to this side of the door. Oops, not like that. There we go. And then when the robot comes in, we can kind of double back on him and head out. Just like that. We 
there we go. Okay, so here we are. Let's just do a quick save again. Now, let's have a look. What are these things? Two enormous storage vaults take up one whole wall of the room. And this trunk is unremarkable in every way. And lastly, an air shaft protrudes from the wall above your head. It is covered by a vent grill. Now that's where we need to go, but just for fun, let's just go for a wander in the ship. Ooh. Lammo! Those pulse ray pistols sure are effective little weapons. Even after it kills you, your meat continues to cook to a nice golden brown. Try not to get shot in the future. Even your life isn't worth much. Think about the rest of the universe. Oh, that's pretty terrible, but okay. Alright, so what we need to do actually is push this trunk along. And then we can stand on it. I think we might need to use the feet. Oh, maybe we need to use the grill. There we go. Your hands by themselves are incapable of opening it. Luckily for us, we have a tool that we can use to pry, which is our Xenon Army Knife. Okay. So now the rats have all gone, we can basically make our way through the vent shaft this one's not really a maze, it's very easy. You just need to go to another screen where there's another vent and that's it. So let's head along here. And then I think with this one, we use the hand icon. With a mighty wimpy kick, you manage to hurt your foot. However, the vent grill opens. Okay, here we are. Now in this room, let's just do another save. What have we got here? Another helmet sits in the washer. This is almost certainly a cheap Sarian knockoff of the genuine cleanse-o-matic rinse and dip used to launder the crew uniforms of Baordia Carter. So let's see if we can get to that helmet. Uh-oh, you hear someone coming. Darn static cling. Hey, look at that. By the most amazing stroke of luck, you've traded in your extremely conspicuous Xenon spacesuit for a Sarian officer's uniform, complete with helmet. Searching the pockets of your newly found disguise, you find the number of possessions you are packing has been greatly reduced. In fact, lost in all that limbo void where socks and bas baseballs disappear is everything but the data cartridge. Now, that doesn't really matter at this point. All we really need is the data cartridge. But notice here on the floor there's something that's kind of a bit colourful. Old fabrics, Fabris softener sheets rest on the floor here. Hey, there's an ID card here also. Okay. So now, if we have a look at this ID card, in the pocket of this ugly outfit is a Sarian ID card. The name on the card is Butston Freem. You wonder if this is a common Sarian name, and if it is, you're glad you're not Sarian. Cool. So now we've got this uniform, we're no longer so conspicuous. So we can wander about the ship freely. So if we go down here, sort of... Actually, I don't know if we can go that way. No, we can't. We can only go this way.
You close your eyes in hopes your death will be quick, but to your surprise, the guards do not notice you. In fact, you think your uniform is that of a higher ranking Sarian officer worth sucking up to. Cool. All right, so on this screen, I can't remember if it's the taste icon or the smell, it was one of them. You could click on one of these elevators and something happened. Maybe I have to click on the guard. Oh, there we go. You can see the random character walking across the screen. So I think that's one of the latex babes of Estros from Space Quest 4. Don't ask me why they put that in. It's just a random one. I don't even know what I was clicking on. What a perfectly useless looking piece of decoration. Okay. The Sarian dude's just kind of wandering around. So let's just go down here just for fun. Where we actually progress is up the elevator, but there are a couple of things down here that are of interest. So you can see here it's just a normal old corridor. We've kind of got this thing with like two, I don't know, weird looking balls on it. If we continue around here, again, there's this really weird looking thing down the bottom. Oops. Let this guy past. You can see these the like really heavily armored soldiers in places. Now I'm trying to remember how we get down to the bottom floor. There's an elevator there, which we need to get around to. Oh, we can do it right here, of course. For some reason I thought that was a wall, but it's not. So you can see we're definitely a high ranking officer because they're all saluting us as we go past. Now down the bottom here is something that I don't think many people know about. So let's say you're a bit silly and didn't notice that there was a card reader on Corona. Well, believe it or not, it looks like some sort of cartridge reader. Maybe the cartridge you have will work in it. I believe, sure enough, it does. So here we go again. It's exactly the same prose as we had when we're on Corona. So we'll skip through it fairly quickly. Great. And this one here gives you the cartridge back by default, which is kind of handy. Down the bottom there is the laundry. We won't bother going in there again. So let's head on back up to the top. Which I wonder if we can sort of go further to the east here. I'm not sure we can. Oh, nope, that's it. So yeah, handy little tip for you if you forgot to get the code off of the cartridge in Corona. Or uh, perhaps you did read the cartridge but forgot the code. There is a way to read it while you're on the Sarian ship. If I'm not mistaken, up here, uh, we're back to where the elevator is. Alright, so let's head up the elevator. So, this is a bit of a specky looking place. Um, we've got this thing with a lightning bolt. From the looks of them, these globes contain high power Wally coils, each one capable of discharging jillions of volts of deadly electricity. I think this calls for a save. Now, from what I remember, there's a couple of ways you can do funny things with these coils. One of them is you kind of wait for it to zap, and if you stand, whoop. Gee, that must have been pretty powerful energy beam. Seems how it reduced you to a pile of carbonized matter. I 
That's always a fun one. Let's just see that once more. I think it always looks funnier if you actually walk into it while it's sort of buzzing. Excellent. All right. That's enough playing around with that one. Let's head off to our, our bleh, head off to our objective, which is over to the left. All right, so these guys will continue saluting us. No problem at all there. Seems obvious to you that the Wally Wood did some designing to that. It's, oh, that's a tongue twister. It seems obvious to you that Wally Wood did some time designing Serian hardware. What is Wally Wood? Someone put it down in the comments. I'm not sure what that reference is. Now this dude here with the brush, he's gonna be a problem soon. For room at the ready, the cleaning droid waits for something useful to do. And yeah, he's going to be a pain very shortly. I remember years ago when I played this game, I thought, oh, it'd be cool if I could shoot that thing before it actually gets in the way, but I don't think it lets you. And down here you can see is the star generator, and there's this really mean dude guarding it. So we need to obviously get down there somehow and get past him, but at the moment we don't have a means of doing that. Because he's not just going to let us walk up to the star generator and put the self-destruct code in. Oh, welcome to the weapons dispensary, I guess. I've got an IQ of 5,000, but they feel I'm only good enough to fetch weapons like some whimpering puppy dog. You'll have to show me your ID card so I can scurry off and fetch your weapon. Why they don't just wire me into the ship's systems, so I know who you are without an ID card, is beyond even my supreme intellect. Now from what I remember this droid, you can kind of troll him a little bit. Um, I'll just save it. I think if you show him the ID and you just kind of walk out, he gets really annoyed. Oh, how clever. You have an ID card, and my my, what an um, lovely photo of a pre-proto organic biped you have to... I guess I'll use my vast resources to fetch your silly weapon for you. Please wait here if you can handle such a simple command. Yeah. So, we do actually have to go and get one of these grenades, but just for fun, let's just walk off. I think if you do this like three or four times, he gets really angry. Oh, welcome to the weapons dispensary. Okay, it's the same thing. Let's show him the ID card again. Uh, maybe you have to wait till he comes back and show him the ID again. I just remember there was some way this droid gets cross. So let's wait for him to come back. And well, while we're doing that, let's just have a look. It looks like a gas grenade. This is a storeroom where a great deal of the Deltor's weapons are kept. Various other weapons are firmly secured to the exterior of the small structure. On the counter in front of the storeroom are two loose gas grenades. Again, it's giving you a big hint that you might want to get a loose gas grenade. And on the original hardware, this gives you a lot of time if you want to go and grab that gas grenade. But we're going to save that for just a minute. Alright, just show him the idea again. Hmm, are you sure you don't already have your weapon? Organics like you have such a tricky memory. Are you sure you didn't do something silly like accidentally eating it or something? Oh, never mind. Don't overtax yourself. I'll just go check. Okay. So that's how you annoy him. Right. Why he's gone, we will take the gas grenade this time. 
and maybe I'll just save it here because I've never tried this. And let's just walk into this room while he's in there. He's probably going to shoot us, but... Oh, here we go. Oh dear, your carbon-based life forms can be so annoying. Even something, even something with incredibly low intelligence should know not to enter a restricted area. I guess I'll just have to destroy you to prevent you from reproducing more of your kind. Thank you for playing Space Quest 1. Too bad you failed miserably and doomed all of your people to a horrible death at the hands of the Sarians. You quickly glance about the room to see if anyone saw your silly mistake. Better luck next time. So, yeah, we can't walk into the room and follow him. So, all we got to do is just basically get back on this side of the counter and we're good. As my supreme intellect suspected, another obvious organic life form error. Let me say this very slowly. There are no more weapons for you. Alright, this is definitely worthy of another save. Let's get him to check again. Oh dear, you again. Actually, looking at your past track record, I'm surprised you didn't take off your boot and start showing me that. I'd better do an evolution a favour and prevent you from reproducing. Bye. That doesn't sound good. I wonder if it's just going to come out and shoot us or something. Do, do, do. So if he does come out, we've got plenty of time to leave if he does come out and want to shoot us. I often wonder why the game gave you three tries with the ID card like this. Um, but I think it's in case you forget the gas grenade the first time. Okay. Let's go for one more. Oh dear, how inconvenient. Another life form is in the restricted area. How your race manages not to vaporize itself into extinction is beyond me. I guess I'll have to be polite about this. Pardon me for terminating you. But he's not actually doing anything. I thought if you did this enough times, he actually did shoot you. Maybe not. Hmm, weird. Well, let's just kind of wander around here for a second. If this doesn't work, I'm going to move on with the game. But you get the idea. Maybe if you do it a few more times, he might just come out and shoot you or something like that. And while we're waiting, is there anything else we can look at in this room? Yep, more pipes. Okay. So... Allow me to state the obvious. This is an entirely bulletproof environment designed to protect us from the acts of imbeciles who fire off rapid action implements in enclosed space. Nevertheless, don't do that again. So it looks like he just keeps throwing insults at you. Anyway, let's wander off. I noted if you try and shoot him, he just laughs at you. Um, basically saying the same thing. Now, this dude here, we have a gas grenade. If we walk down and try and shoot him with a pulse ray, nothing happens because he's too heavily armoured. So, in the interest of time, I'm not going to bother with that because, again, it doesn't really do lots and you don't get a very funny message. So, let's get this gas grenade and drop it down here. All right. So, that's that taken care of. Now the difficult bit. Unfortunately, this guy is going to be a pest in a second. And 
I'll just try this again. I know this doesn't work though. Oh, you can't even do it. We've just got to ride this one out, unfortunately. So what's going to happen here is we're going to cross the screen. My, aren't you the clumsy one. Because of your inability to walk without falling on your face, your helmet has been collected by the trash droid. Now you've blown your cover, the Sarians are sure to shoot first and ask questions later. And that is not understating it. So let's be very careful now. This is why we need the pulse ray gun. So we kind of have it at the ready at all times. You generally get one warning shot. And that's it. Oh, I got him. So this can be tricky. I'm just going to kind of save it as I move forward. Just to save time in case I do get shot. Do this as just a different file just in case you can sometimes turn a corner and render it kind of um, unwinnable because you don't have time to get your gun out now I think if you shoot these ball things something funny happens Good shooting, Tex. You really did it now, Wilco. Don't you know that Macromat field integrators are extremely fragile pieces of equipment and indiscriminately shooting at them with a pulse ray gun can be hazardous to your health? No, I didn't know that. But that's a classic. All right, I think that's all the sort of fun stuff you can do with the pulse ray, at least at this point. I guess at the end of the day you achieved your objective by shooting that, but you didn't exactly live to tell the tale. So here we are with the star generator. Do a quick save. I don't know if we can just shoot it. Worth a shot, I guess. <laughs> Literally. No, it doesn't let you do that. Alright, so what we need to do is we need to get rid of this force field. You remove the device from the guard's belt. It looks like you found the remote control that turns off the force field around the star generator. I wonder what happens if you don't turn off the force field. Can you walk up to it? It appears the shield is preventing you from getting to the star generator's control panel and boy is it hot. You better not try to get close to the star generator again. Let's try that again. Ouch! That stings just a tad. You'll obviously need to disarm that baby before trying that again. Another classic. Alright, so this time we'll actually disarm the force field. Alright. I don't remember, it looks like a really weird remote control. That's it. Small single function remote control. You press the start on the remote and the force field around the star generator begins to deplete. Great. So. Now what we can do. Is... Enter a code. Now, I wonder what happens if you enter the wrong code. Valid code entered. I 
what happens if you do it more than once? I don't recall there being any sort of consequence to just repeatedly putting invalid codes in. But I thought maybe it will do something funny. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so what was our code? I think it was 4437, if I recall correctly. So, 4437. Enter. Always love to have a nice day. Nice touch. Fire the pulse ray at it now. No, nah, I'll let you. Okay, so this thing is winding up to destroy itself. So let's just create one more save. And I think we've kind of exhausted most of it now. So let's go back out here. If you loiter around for the 4 minutes and 38, the delta just blows up, much like when we blew up one of these Wally Ball things. Um, and you just get a, whoa, a message. Oh, missed. There we go. Okay. So now we're approaching the end of the game. So as we go down the elevator, there's another elevator just to our right. The guy guarding it. We have to very quickly get out our pulse ray. There we go. And then this elevator leads to the escape pod. Ooh, that's gonna be close. Got it. fun to look at down here. It's definitely some sort of thing. You're in another area of the Delta. This must be the captain's personal escape pod. Well, looks like about it. All right, just really quickly. Do one more of these. I want to see if we can walk down into this channel. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. Try going way over here and then down. No, it doesn't let me. Oh well. Kaboom. Now I just thought of something. I wonder what would happen if we were to somehow not set the self-destruct on the star generator, but steal the captain's escape pod. Maybe we'll give that a shot in a minute. But nonetheless, here we are triumphantly returning towards Xenon. Roger Wilco, we, the people of Xenon, extend our limitless appreciation and eternal gratitude for your acts of heroism. Because of your bravery, the planet at Xenon, and indeed the entire galaxy, has been saved from domination by the evil, not to mention ugly, Sarians. 
It is my honour to present you with a coveted golden mop, a symbol of pride and accomplishment to members of your esteemed profession. Henceforth and for all time, you'll be known as Hero of Xenon. Well, Roger, you did it. You saved the galaxy, received your profession's most noble tribute, and got the girl. Wait a minute, there wasn't any girl. Sorry, well, you got the mop anyway. From now on, Xenon's your oyster. All you have to do now is, whoa, read faster. And now the sun sets on the peaceful blue planet, Xenon and Roger Wilco's first adventure. Yes, I'm afraid they're more. Wow, they want you to read that fast. But you can always pause the video back there if you want to read the whole thing. But it just goes on to say that there's going to be a lot more space quests to come. So there we go. Uh, what I'm going to do now, just really quickly, um, as I was saying earlier, I wonder what happens if you try and get in the escape pod, but we don't actually set the generator self-destruct. Let's give that a try. him. Okay. So far so good. Oop. Oh, this is going to be close. Got it. Okay. Oh, we've got a point. This is going to be interesting. Woo! You're off the Delta and safe at last. You can't ignore, however, a nagging feeling that you've forgotten something important. Now what could that be? While you sit back and relax, soaking in the distant view as you excitedly approach Xenon, you have the uneasy feeling you might have forgotten something. Congratulations, you did a great job, to a point. That is, if you overlook the fact that you forgot to set the self-destruct sequence on the star generator, leaving it ready for the Sarians to use against Xenon and the rest of the universe. Nice try. So there's the answer if you uh, basically do not set the self-destruct and you exit the uh, Deltor. Well, that brings us to the end of Space Quest 1 VGA. I hope you've enjoyed this playthrough and if you've seen the Space Quest 1 EGA playthrough as well, I hope you've enjoyed the comparison between the two. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you watching the videos. It does mean a lot to me. If you've enjoyed it, consider giving it a thumbs up. It really also helps the channel to grow. And also leave a comment if there's something I've missed or something I could do in the future, anything like that, or maybe an observation from pop culture that I totally missed. Please put it down there in the comments and I'd love to read that too. That's gonna to do it for this playthrough of Space Quest 1 VGA. Thanks again, and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.